welcome to episode 31 of Little Bobbins Knits. My name is Danny, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Little Bobbins. We have a Ravelry group which you can find by searching Little Bobbins Knits in the groups tab on Ravelry, and show notes for the podcast can be found at littlebobbins.co.uk. So thank you so much for being here today. I am having a, well, I think I'm having a bit of a hay fevery day. But I'm trying to pretend that I don't have hay fever, so I'll just say it's a cold. But I hope I don't have to stop to blow my nose or anything, and that's why my nose is bright red. So just thought I'd warn you. I hope you've had a really lovely week. Thank you so much to everyone who's been in touch over this last week. And thank you to everyone who got involved in the thread talking about who um, your favourite sock knitting method. That was so interesting. And isn't it, I just find it fascinating how we all produce the same things, a pair of socks, but we um, just really love doing them in different ways. And it sounds like most of us love <clears throat> experimenting with the different ways until we find our favourite. So yeah, that was a really fun thread. So thank you so much for getting involved in that. And thank you also for the votes of confidence and support in my whole trying to knit from stash escapades that may be coming soon. <laughs> so I've got a little bobbin down here. He's fast asleep. I don't think I'll pick him up. He's quite grumpy this morning, as is his way. So today I've got some works in progress to show you, some finished objects, all I can see is my bright red nose, some lovely things and we'll announce for the giveaway of the lovely bag from Lee. This one. So cute. You good boy. I'm just going to have a sip of my tea. I've got some of that chocolate super berry burst that I showed you last week from Claire. You good boy. And it's so tasty. It tastes as good as it smells, and I don't think you always get that from herbal teas. It's very delicious. Bless you, my baby! Oh dear. Felonius Monk, actually, in the What Do You Want to See on the Podcast thread, asked about my mugs. Because she remembered that she'd heard... Oh, I thought he was going to sneeze again. That I'd made some of them. And this is one of the ones that I've made. I used to go to a pottery class with Wendy, who I mentioned last week. She got me that lovely cup from Norway. She's yarnbowl987 on Instagram, and she has an Etsy shop where she sells her yarn bowls that she makes. I used to go to a class with her when I was about seven and made various things, like I remember making a pig and a castle and a house, and that was really fun. And then quite a few years later, well, quite a few years later, like 20 years later, I went back to her class because she held a Monday morning class where you could go along and make things. And I liked playing on the wheel, so I made some mugs and some bowls, made some casserole dishes. I have made some more um, for fun sort of art pieces. Um, I think mum has most of those but yeah I managed to open my cupboard door and four of my handmade that was five, four of my handmade mugs fell out of the cupboard oh, it was so sad so I treat this one with the utmost respect because I think it's the only one I have now mum has one that I made but yeah, I think this is my only mug that I've got left. I glazed everything in this same speckled glaze because I absolutely loved it. But I really love drinking out of this because it's massive. I think this could have been a bowl, really. <laughs> Just made it a huge cup for my tea. Oh, that tea is so nice. 
So let's have a look at works in progress. Now I've rehomed this project. Well, actually, it was entirely homeless last week. I hadn't found a bag for it yet. But it's now been put in my lovely bag from Luli. Lee, who has the Shop Luli Etsy shop. Such a fantastic bag because it's really lovely and roomy. And on this side, there are pockets which is just so handy. I've got my little labels in there that I'll tell you about later. We'll tell you a bit more about later. But yeah, it's a really lovely roomy bag. I'm really enjoying using it. Perfect for this. It, that's the medium size. So in there I've got my Lena tea by Carrie Bostick Hogue. I'm still not sure if that's how you pronounce her last name but I think it might be. I'm in a bit of an awkward spot here but I've knit the front and back flaps they split there <clears throat> and then I've joined them in the round so now I've just got a lot of round and round knitting to do I really love how this yarn is knitting up so fun with those flecks and I think it's going to be really lovely and light. Now I'm using High Higher Sharps 3.25mm just a fixed circular which I'm really enjoying. I love those needles. What's happened there? Oh that's fine. Um, I can't take all the credit for this because mum knit quite a few rounds on it. She comes over to look after Bobbin when I go to yoga class because he can't be left on his own at all anymore. Um, and I got back from yoga and she'd knit like an inch, an inch and a half or something. So I was very happy about that. So I'll make sure that I leave it out for her again. <laughs> but that's going fine. It's just nothing to it really at the moment because it's just knitting round and round. I'm enjoying the yarn still, it's the Bergère de France Bigger L, the linen, cotton and viscose mix and it's constructed in quite an interesting way. I don't know if you can see it but it looks like there's a ply of the natural coloured linen, a ply of the purple cotton and then with the viscose little nips dotted around in there. But I quite like that mild effect. I think it makes for quite an interesting looking finished knit. So yes, that's my first work in progress. My second work in progress, I haven't knit on this blanket for ages. But on Saturday night I was <sighs> fantasising about casting on lots and lots of different things but I would quite like to finish a few of the things that I've got on the needles at the moment so I really didn't want to cast anything new on just yet. So instead I thought I would knit a couple of squares on my blanket. And I realised that I started this blanket exactly a year ago on Saturday, which I thought was quite fun. Quite fun that that was the day that I chose to pick it back up again after a really, really long break. I like things like that. Noticing little synchronicities. So it's quite big now. can't imagine I can get all that in the frame. It's 120 squares and I'm not sure what I'm aiming for. I know I did work it out but I've forgotten it and I didn't write it down anywhere of course but now that I've got to a rectangle, I don't know if you can see but in the middle they go out in a cross. So now that I've got out to a square I'm going to start another round going all the way. Because of how I am making this, 
And there's a diagram that sort of tells you how I'm making it on my project page if you're interested. But because of how I, how I decided to make this, I can pretty much keep going until it's as big as I want it to. But the lines of the decreases in the centre of the squares go out at a sort of cross. So I'll do another round all the way around the blanket I think and maybe a couple more actually because I would like it to be really big. And I love having all of the different yarns included in here. Even just having it put away for a little while I sort of come back to it now and think oh yeah I remember that yarn, oh that's so fun and I really really love it. So these are the three that I added on Saturday. This one was from Lena, from the A Wee Bit Nitty podcast. This one was from Claire, one of the yarns on the lovely pegs that she gave me. And this is a little square of yarn. This is from the wool barn, and it was leftovers from the interlude shawl that I knit for my mum. It's merino cashmere and nylon, and it's lovely and soft. So, they're my three that I added. And I really, really enjoyed getting it out again. It was so, so lovely to add those squares on. I did have to check in my project page how I actually knit my squares because I'd completely forgotten. And then I looked on my project page, started knitting one and realised I was doing a completely incorrect thing anyway. So even reading doesn't help me sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, I worked it out in the end. I was just doing my centre double decrease wrongly, so it wasn't coming up with the right. Um, it was leaning to one side instead of going straight up, which is what mine do. So that was very, very fun, and it's always lovely to see how big that's got. I really love that. Sorry, my throat feels a little bit scratchy, so that's given me hope that it might be a cold and not hay fever. <laughs> so, finished objects. I finished the campsite shawl for Mum. I knit it out of Rowan Alpaca Colour, Colour 75. And this is huge as well. It's really lovely. I don't know if you can see the sort of really light stripes. There's sort of different shades of blue. And it's made nice sort of stripes in the knitting, which I actually really like. I was a bit unsure about it when I first started, but I think the overall effect of it is really quite lovely. So this is the Campside Shawl by Alicia Plummer and it's a really really lovely knit. I know that lots of people have said that they're cautious about knitting it because there are mistakes in the pattern but the mistakes are very well documented in some of the helpful projects. If you search the helpful projects tab when you're looking at the projects for this shawl there are lots of people who have put all of the corrections that have needed to be made in their project pages, which was so useful. If you look on my project page, there at the bottom there are, I think it's called something like Little Bobbins Related Bookmarks, where I've favourited, I think, or marked as helpful, a few of the different projects that really helped me. And that has all you need to know, really, if you want to knit the project, the pattern. The only things that you need to look out for is, on one of the charts, there is a missing yarn over. But as long as you make sure your charts are mirrored, then you'll be able to spot that. But someone's written it in their project notes, which is really, really helpful. The other thing is, on the charts, the repeat box doesn't go all the way to the top, and it should. So just make sure that repeat box goes all the way up, and you'll be fine. And another thing that's not made explicitly clear is you should be 
um, knitting the centre stitch through the back loop and then on the way back purling it through the back loop. But I think that's it. So as long as you just keep an eye out for those things and have a look at the helpful projects, you'll be fine knitting this. And if it's... As long as you've made that correction, it might be an interesting one to try knitting from charts because the charts are very, very simple and there are lots of different places online that can help you learn how to read a chart because it's such a useful skill to learn, I think. I, for the majority of the time, like working from written instructions because my brain translates that better into stitches for some reason. I can keep track of where I am better and things like that. But I do find on lace that is charted is really, really useful to have. And I find it most useful to have in times like when I was knitting the Ashling shawl for mum, the Justina Lorkowska pattern, I made a mistake a few rows, well, quite a few repeats back in the border. It had a knitted on border like this. I made a mistake quite a few repeats back and I had to rip it back. And I could have been really, really lost because it was a lace pattern and could have been extremely confusing. But because I had the charts, I could look at where I'd picked up my... Because it was quite a long repeat as well, so it could have been a complete disaster. But because I had the charts, I could put my needle in underneath where I'd made the mistake. And look at how those stitches were sat on the needle. And then refer to the chart. And it meant that I could tell exactly where I was. Because the chart is like a... It's like a picture of your stitches, isn't it? So if you don't know how to use a chart, I would really, really, really recommend learning because it can be just so helpful. If I hadn't have known how to use them for that shawl, I might have had to rip back the whole of the border and then I would have cried. <laughs> so yes. I really like this pattern. I can't imagine that I'll ever knit it again though because... I've knit it twice now and I think twice is my limit, really. There are so many other patterns that I want to knit that I think I'll not knit this one again. But I do really love it, so I'm glad that I have one and Mum has one now. Um, it's interesting to see how different yarn reacts in the same pattern. My campsite, I also knit with 100% alpaca. But because mine was applied yarn, my shawl feels very, very bouncy and thick and squishy. Because Mum's is knit out of a singles, so just a single ply of the yarn, it's much lighter and much more fluid, much drapier and a bit thinner. I can't imagine it'll be any less warm though, because alpaca's just wonderfully warm. But I thought that was quite interesting quite an interesting sort of study in how yarn knits up and how patterns can change with different yarns. So I like that. And mum will be very very pleased with that. I've been sewing so there's a thread on everything. If it's not dog hair it's thread. It just covers my stuff. <laughs> So yes, that's that finished, in time for it to get hot, which is good, because that was going to be a very hot one to knit. My next finished object is my Vajur Shawlette by Fluffy Fibres. Now this isn't blocked because I just finished it last night. But it's so lovely and I can't wait to block it. I'm going to block it as soon as I've finished this. I use Sweet Georgie yarn, Merino Silk Fine, which is 50% Merino wool and 50% silk. And this was a lovely present from Deb, who's Tink Hickman. It's the melon colourway. And it is just like a really, really juicy melon. 
lovely. Um, I loved knitting this and I knew when I went into it that I was really running the risk of running out of yarn. This um, skein has 380 yards and the pattern recommends 400. So I knew that I was, it was probably not the most sensible choice, but I really wanted to use it because it was going to make for a really lovely special birthday cast on. And as I knew that I was going to run out of yarn, I used my scales quite a lot. I have some little tiny digital scales that I use to weigh my knitting and weigh my yarn. So with this one, I got to the end of the stocking stitch section and weighed my yarn. And I had 51 grams, so I knew that wasn't going to be enough to knit the whole border. So to try and get round that, I went down a needle size to knit this border. It's knitted on. So pretty. I can't wait to see it all open up. So I went down from a 4mm needle to a 3.75mm needle to try and conserve a bit of yarn. <clears throat> and I was weighing my repeats, or weighing how much yarn each repeat took. And I knew from right at the beginning that I was going to run out because yeah, it just didn't add up. So luckily I thought that I would only be short one repeat and I got to the end and it was going to be that I was only going to be short that one repeat. So I decided to, when you do a knitted on border, if you haven't done one before, you have your border stitches and then at the end of the row you work a border stitch with a main body stitch. So you work those two stitches together. And to conserve yarn and take up space, I worked one uh, border stitch with two body stitches for the last repeat and it got me to the end. I also missed out one of the rows and just um, purled one of the rows so that it would make the sort of reverse stocking stitch section so it would match the other side as closely as I could. It's not a perfect match but it's it's good enough I think. And I made it to the end which I was just so happy about because I knew I couldn't just sort of stick in another yarn. I haven't got anything like this yarn, it is just so unusual and beautiful and I knew I couldn't just stick in a random colour there because it just wouldn't look right. So if I hadn't been able to get to the end I would have had to rip back the whole border and knit it on in a completely different colour. So I was so happy to have got to the end with the yarn. But I do, I think that using scales and getting to know how much yarn things use, how much yarn things use, that sounded wrong, um, but I think that made sense. I think that's really helpful because I sort of had, from the beginning of my border, I was sort of percolating on ideas of how I would get round this shortage of yarn issue. So. It was good to not get to the end and suddenly realise that I haven't got enough yarn and have to bodge it even more or rip back or anything. So yeah, they're such a handy tool for knitters I think. And yes, I'm going to block this today, which I'm really excited about. It's an absolutely lovely pattern. The um, the little border repeats seem to go quite quickly. It, this, I think because of the combination of a lovely pattern and lovely yarn, this just felt like it flew off the needles a little bit. But I'll show it you again next week when I've blocked it, because it will look different then. Just have another sip of my tea. My throat's feeling a bit scratchy. Did I really say that? I don't know. So, 
My final work in progress, no, finished object, is my morning mist top. This is by Annie Rowden. And I knit it in Rowan Baby Silk Alpaca. And I'm really pleased with it actually. I'll show you. It's the one with the lovely lacy back. It's not a very easy one to show you but you start with the lacy back and then you construct the top around that which I think is really fun. I'll try and show you the bottom. It's just sort of longish and I could put one of my labels there which I absolutely love. I split the plies of some yarn so that the stitches would match the top and that there is a little silk nip <laughs> that was in the yarn so yeah it's really lovely I don't know if I can show you the back well but yes so that's my top um, I really really enjoyed knitting this top I am going to knit it again because it was so fun um, one thing that I did find not difficult but had to be fixed was where you cast on for the neckline my cast on must have been too loose or something because um, it rolled it was really really rolling there was so much excess there when I picked up the stitches to do this sort of garter stitch band it just looked horrible it was just so rolly um, so I ripped out the neckband and I picked it up again and I tried picking up less stitches around here, around the neck because I thought that would take up some of the excess but because it was a backward loop cast on it left pearl bumps out the front every so often it just didn't look neat enough so I picked up the same amount of stitches again and then on my first row round I I think the first row round was a pearl row so I purled a couple of stitches together every sort of three stitches or something so that it would take in the excess without puckering and it's blocked out really well I think I don't think you can tell that I had to do that um, surgery so to speak and it sits nice and flat which is really nice and I love the little sleeves so yeah I'm really really pleased with it and I think the lace panel is really lovely it's I don't know that this yarn is brilliant for a summer top because I think it's going to be quite warm but I think it will be quite nice sort of spring or autumn time when it's still quite nice weather but with a bit of a chilly breeze in the air. So my next one will be knit with bamboo and cotton to make it a proper summery top but I'm really pleased with how this one came out. The Morning Mist Top by Annie Rowden. I'm not sure if I just said that or not. But I would highly recommend the pattern. It's a really, really fun one to do. It's got such a fun construction. And it's got, like I mentioned last week, you get all of the complicated, or it's not complicated, I don't want that to sound off-putting, but you get all of the brain stuff where you have to concentrate a little bit, done. And then from here down, you were just knitting round and round and round, which is what I like, really. So, yes, that's finished, which is very, very exciting. So, on to lovely things. Now, I got some... I... Last week when I mentioned that I was going to be not buying yarn, I knew that I still had some yarn to come that I'd already bought. And I think it's all come now. <laughs> so, I won't be stalking the postman quite as much. <laughs> but I got this. Oh, sorry, my nose. 
This one is from British Bee Knits and it's sparkly, which I love. This is one of her Buffy colourways. This is based on the episode The Pack and it's called Shoot Me, Stuff Me, Mount Me. And it's the self striping. And because I've chatted to Rebecca, I know exactly where she got her colour inspiration from. It's from the the sign above the zoo when they're going in to the zoo at the beginning. And it's so perfect. The colours are just absolutely perfect. And I really enjoy how she picks sort of the more unusual places to get her colour inspiration from. Because it totally says the episode, if you know where it's from. And, but it's just a bit more of an unusual place to get the inspiration from, if that makes sense. So I'm really, really thrilled with that. And her yarn for the Buffy is... Is this the Buffy Unclub? Yeah, Socks with Buffy Anti-Club. And because it's one of those, it comes with one of these lovely... It's a zip pull, so you can put that little clip on your zip of your project bag. And it's got this beautiful knotted cord which matches your yarn colours perfectly. And then there's a little ring on the bottom that you can put your stitch markers on. Which I just think is so clever. So you always have that on your project bag. You always have a little stash of handy stitch markers on your zip. Which I think is really, really clever. So, yes, I really love that. And Rebecca also sent me some fibre which is just gorgeous. These are some blends that she has especially made. And they're merino. Oh, and they're so beautiful. There's orange, pink and black in there. It's just beautiful. It's really, really soft. And this colour is called Dobby's Socks, which I just love. So that's lovely. And this one is so pretty. This is yellow, pink, purple and black. This is called Acid House. So they're just going to be so much fun to knit. Uh, spin, even. And then knit. But yes, I love those. So thank you so much, Rebecca. So that little tag that I showed you, I can't remember if I mentioned. That one is from Grain Deep on Etsy. They do custom laser engraved items and they sent me some completely lovely labels for my knits that I showed last week. They're so cute, so I would really recommend going to have a look at those. I just love. I love that little touch that they added. Um, some, I thought I'd bring out another couple of skeins of my birthday yarn to show you. This was from David. It's got dog hair on it. Um, I got this at I Knit Fandango and then, but David gave me the money so then he took it and wrapped it for my birthday. This one is from Lioness Arts and it's called Brighton Beach. And I just think it's beautiful. Very beige, just little specks of blue, pink and yellow that I can see. Yeah. It's just beautiful. It's a superwash merino nylon. So that's lovely. I don't know what I'll do with it yet. And I also got this one from Easy Knits and this is called... Baby face, and this is on his twinkle base, which is Zubosh Merino Nylon and Stellina. Oh, isn't that so pretty? I love those sort of really baby pastel colours, but with the flashes of grey, I think that, and the sort of flashes of beigey taupe colours, I think that sort of makes it a bit more grown up than just those pastels. That's really pretty. I imagine that will be socks. So yeah, 
There's some more of my birthday yarn. And then I got just an incredible package from Kristen of the Yarn Guessing Podcast who has Full and Vine yarns and I should have taken this out of the plastic before showing you so I'll do it quick. Sorry about that. This package is just so amazing. <laughs> She sent me a lovely little card, some lovely little tea bags, I've had one of them already, it was caramel coconut which was just delicious, I love coconut things, and there's a honey lavender stress relief, licorice and cinnamon and red velvet tea bags, and there's a Yarngasm podcast button or badge. Which is so cute. And she sent me two skeins of yarn. Speechless. They are just beautiful, like incredibly beautiful. This one is her octopus garden colourway on her blitzed base. And oh, it's golds. A sort of turquoise green, magenta pink, and there's flashes of lilac going through. It, oh, it's incredible. Beautiful. And then this one is her Stella Banshee on her Volca base, which is a merino cashmere and nylon. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. So beautiful. So one of these is to give away to one of you, which I'm so ex well, I want to keep them both obviously, <laughs> but I'm so excited to be able to give one away to you because it's just such a, such an exciting prize. So I'm not sure how I'm going to give it away yet, so stay tuned, but yes, one of these will be coming to one of you, which is very exciting. They are just just amazing so thank you so much Kristen and she also sent me this completely cute packet I love that sound that paper makes this is full of minis which is just so lovely they are so fun sorry I had to stop it there because Bobbin decided to bark now he's looking at me as if to say, right, I've barked, now give me a treat so that I stop barking. Because <laughs> he's quite clever. Um, yes, gorgeous, gorgeous minis. Just packed full of gorgeous minis. And it's so fun because I love Kristen's podcast, Yarngasm podcast. It's just, it's one of my favourite ones. It's one that, um, it was one of the first podcasts that I listened to because it started as an audio, so... It was one of my very first podcasts and I've watched it since because it's just, it's brilliant and it's so, as a viewer of, of Kristen's podcast, it's been so fun watching her sort of journey into dyeing these incredible yarns, just amazing. So anyway, um, as a viewer of her podcast, it's so fun because I remember her knitting this yarn in socks and stuff like that so yeah really really gorgeous yarns just lovely and she's written down what each of them are for me which is really really lovely so yes amazing amazing package thank you so much Kristen and I'm very excited to give away one of these to one of you I haven't decided which yet and I haven't decided how yet but it will be coming soon So that's my lovely things and everything. Before I do the giveaway, before I draw for the giveaway, I was having a think about a knit along. Um, I was chatting to Deb, who's Tink Hickman, and she suggested, I think someone else suggested it on the board actually, if we could have a knit along where we knit from our stash. So 
what do you think about that? I know there's stash dash and things going on at the moment, so we could have um, people could sort of double dip and things with that. But what do you think about doing a little knit along? I was thinking because I buy yarn for something quite often if I'm buying a amount that will knit a garment I will have that garment in mind so I think I have about four or five well probably more than that um, I have a few amounts of yarn that are specifically for a project so I wondered if you wanted to, if that's something you do as well, how about we knit one of those amounts or one of those little bundles of yarn with a plan, how about we knit that into our planned pattern? I think that might be quite good to get to get one of those little bundles made into the thing that you intended to make it into before, if you're anything like me, getting completely distracted by something else and then buying more yarn for that something else that you then want to knit and then still not knitting that thing because you've got distracted by something else. So <laughs> what about if we knit one of those amounts together? Um, I don't want to have any sort of knit along where we don't buy yarn because or where we all agree not to buy yarn because that's no fun and there's so much lovely yarn out there to buy if you can afford to buy yarn I want to see it I'd love to see what you're buying sort of so that I can have the vicarious shopping experience but I thought maybe we could use up some of our stash at the same time make room for those other things to come in. So let me know what you think. Another knit along idea actually was suggested by Lee who provided our lovely giveaway prize and she suggested that we have an enchanted messer along. I don't know if you remember last week but I showed you some yarns that I got um, for my birthday with the intention of using for that pattern. So that might be quite a fun thing to do. That's quite a, a good, if you've got lots of, hey little baby, if you've got lots of um, random bits of stash, I imagine that would be quite a fun project to use up all your bits of stash. So it could be connected to the stash knit along as well. But yeah. I just thought I'd mention that in case anyone else wants to cast one of those on and we could all cast on together. It looks like it'll be a really fun and interesting knit, like all of Stephen West's patterns. So, yeah, if you'd like to do an Enchanted Messer along, then do let me know as well in the thread, because that would be lots of fun. <laughs> so if you'd like to join in, in the and do a, some sort of stash knit along, do let me know and yeah I think that would be quite fun. It's still, I'm still sort of thinking about it so if you've got any ideas I would love to hear them but I think that would be a lot of fun and I would love to use one of my allotted bundles for something or for what it was actually intended to be used for instead of just room insulation which is what it's currently being used as. So let's do the lovely giveaway for the little bag from Lee. Shop Luli on Etsy and luli.co.uk. Let me get random number generator. And we'll put in the numbers. Ah, oh, there it is. Two. to 210 we'll generate that let's come up with 21 so let's have a look who 21 is oh excuse my sniffing Twen 
51. Ah, there it is. So number 21 is Lights On, who kept their knitting in the storage box in the middle of the front seats in their car. And Lights On is Mary from Kentucky. So congratulations Mary. Do get in touch with me and send me your address and I'll be able to get that lovely bag in the post to you. And Lee also very, very kindly um, provided a postage paid envelope for this, which was really, really kind because postage does cost a lot. So that was very, very much appreciated. Thank you, Lee. So yes, lights on, Mary. Do get in touch with me with your address and I'll get that in the post to you very, very soon. So we'll have another giveaway next week. I just need to get everything organised for it. But yeah, I think that's everything for today. So thank you very much for being here today. Um, yeah, I really, really appreciate you coming and watching. So come along to the thread. Sorry, my brain has just decided to give up. Um, come along to the thread and let me know if you want to do some sort of stash knit along because I think that would be fun. Um, and yeah, just have a really, really lovely week and I will speak to you soon. So bye.